Hello, dear guests. It's good to be here and talk to you, honestly. I hope the last few weeks were treating you kindly and that you have been enjoying the beautiful and mystical autumn or glorious spring, depending on where you live. In the last video I told you I was going to talk a bit about alchemy, which is just one of my favorite topics when it comes to magic, the subconscious and self-development. I feel like it's a perfect thing to talk about at this inspiring time of transition into the slower and more pleasant days of the year, at least for me. In autumn everything turns inwards which is a process you can see most clearly in leaves as they wither on trees, for example. In our world's folklore we find tales of gods and goddesses who travel to the underworld at this time of the year, which symbolizes this very important process of nature, of the whole world turning inwards, which results in darkness, results in cold and essentially death, which is both real and symbolic. So in tune with this current energy I wanted to talk a little bit about alchemy, which is an occult teaching that is all about those inner and outer processes and that can help one understand oneself and the world better. So, what is alchemy? The mystical art of the sages, the power to transform baser metals into gold, or just a medieval gimmick, really? Well, as with most things, there is no simple answer. Now, of course, there is a dichotomy between perspectives on alchemy, namely, there's the perspective of history, let's say, and the perspective of occultism. From the historical standpoint, alchemy is an occult science, occult meaning hidden, a hidden science that has survived until our times only in fragments. Crucial pieces of its puzzles are just lost in time and whatever its point was, or whether it even was, history tells us is just really impossible to know. But its occult nature reminds us that it is probably just what it is, that its true nature is naturally supposed to be hidden. Alchemy is an ancient art and it has been practiced since ancient times, in medieval Islamic world, even in China and India, as well as in Europe. It is a phenomenon which traveled the world and influenced many knowledge-hungry people. Throughout history there have been thousands and thousands of books and papers attributed to various alchemists, and a lot of those texts evidently have hidden meanings as they are written using complex symbolism or language. Now for sure, alchemy was very popular in medieval times and it also attracted lots of charlatans wanting to make a penny by pretending they are able to transform nothing into pure gold. And that is only one of the reasons uh, why today alchemy is sometimes perceived as a lie, as something made up, an ancient scam, basically. But if we take a better look at the teachings of alchemy, those that have survived, we can see that Alchemy can be understood as a phenomenon that's born out of humanity's intense need to understand ourselves, to understand our world and our role in the universe. I see it as 
a means to ask questions about the true nature of things and while doing so to venture into the search for let's say the foundation of everything you can think of it as a search for the god particle let's say the alchemists called this god particle this object of their search prima materia which means first matter and when this key is found the first matter is to be purified in a way and after it is purified a magical substance can be extracted from it this substance can be understood by the symbol of the phoenix a bird that rises from the ashes and is basically immortal then this newly born substance being immortal and containing transformative powers is then thought to be the secret to transforming lesser or base metals such as iron or lead into precious metals like silver and gold you can see why alchemy was attractive to frauds who would easily pretend to be creating lots and lots of gold even in front of people telling them they they made it using alchemical powers when in fact it was a lesser metal made to look like gold or simply sold as gold however what these scammers did not know or just did not care about <laughs> was the fact that this alchemical gold or silver were likely not actual physical precious metals but rather symbols of an inner occult process a process of a spiritual or divine nature now this is obviously where occultism steps in as it is literally impossible to research and to talk about the historical development of alchemy without eventually stepping into the history of philosophy magic and spirituality now let us try to get a better understanding of this inner spiritual process that alchemy is supposed to be about now alchemists just like the astrologers had an understanding of the interconnectedness of everything that is of the microcosm and the macrocosm they understood how things on the smaller scale such as us humans are connected to everything else on the larger scale such as nature the planets and the whole universe and according to them this interconnectedness of everything tells us that this everything really is just one thing but manifest in different forms and that is the starting point of all the other operations and theories within alchemy itself and it is also the starting point of many branches of occultism in general so one of the primary goals of alchemy is understanding how these connections between between things or parts of the one thing actually work and whether it is possible to make use of this connectedness in a way that would make humans be more in tune with their divinity the creator or the one thing they thought that humans could in a way better themselves both spiritually and physically the mind and the body that are transformed by alchemical means are open to creative energies contained in nature and in the whole universe and this process is symbolically expressed by the metaphor of lesser metals turning into gold as gold is culturally speaking associated with perfection purity timelessness and essentially immortality now one way this thing could be accomplished is something that's called the union of opposites 
which means firstly to realize the principle of duality that is present in us and around us. The most simple example of this duality is just the day and night cycle that rules our lives basically. And if we apply this to our minds, then one of the clearest manifestations of duality is expressed in us having the conscious mind and the subconscious. Now, alchemy tells us that if we can create a space inside of us, a space that can allow our subconscious mind to function in harmony with our conscious mind, we will have undergone an alchemical transformation. So, if we harmonize the subconscious with the conscious, we are actually integrating crucial aspects of our human experience. And just as the creative energy of the universe is manifest in uh, natural dualities of night and day that flow flawlessly, by this union of opposites in ourselves, we unearth this omnipresent creative energy inside ourselves and it is basically set in motion. At the end, our personality is transformed, it is purified as the flow of creative energy gradually makes us more open to acting consciously and in tune with a real self, essentially. Now I'm going to mention some actual things that can aid us on this journey. Firstly, there is education. Primary, primarily knowledge of ourselves, as getting acquainted with our mind and body and their needs is crucial. And knowledge of nature and its laws and cycles is of great help as well, as understanding nature can in turn help us get better insight into the connection between it and ourselves by recognizing the patterns and laws. And one of my favorite ways to start this process of understanding yourself is also one of the best and most accessible ways. And that is by journaling. So I have prepared a few simple journaling prompts for this occasion. Once inspired by alchemy and the alchemical process. And if you've come this far in the video, I think you're gonna love them. So let's get to the prompts. At the beginning of this first prompt, Close your eyes, straighten your spine, and take a few deep but slow breaths. When you feel ready, ask yourself, what is one thing that makes me feel like me? Whatever comes up is completely valid. It is your guiding light and something to focus on at all times on your path to self-discovery. The second prompt is, in which ways can I amplify this feeling? Again, write down everything that comes up. Chances are that you'll end up writing down real, actual things you can do. You're also likely going to be returning to this prompt each time something new comes up, and that is exactly what you want to do. The third prompt is, if you were a part of the natural world, what would you be and why? Now, of course, you already are a part of nature, but this prompt is an exercise in reflection. Like the one after it, you'll see. You might see yourself as an animal, a certain plant, or even a weather phenomenon. Write it down and try to think of all the reasons why you see yourself as it. You might surprise yourself with some of the things that come up, and maybe you'll get some interesting ideas. You could also do some more research on this part of nature you see yourself as, and maybe you'll encounter a piece of information that will be especially relevant for you. 
And the final and fourth prompt is also a little exercise in reflection, and it has three parts. Ask yourself, what are some of my favorite traits of mine that I also see in people around me? And its opposite. What are some of my least favorite traits of mine that I also see in people around me? And what are some real actionable things I can do to amplify those favorite traits of mine when I'm in contact with people around me? Apart from being an exercise in reflection and so that you can get a better understanding of your connection to people in your life, this prompt also gives you insight into the things you value and the ways that you can act out on those values in communication with others, thus strengthening and refining your personality in the process. And that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little journey. Keep in mind that there is so much more to alchemy. It is a complex occult science that some people have been devoting their whole lives to, both centuries ago as well as now. The point of this video was to try to give just a really basic kind of introduction to the alchemical process as an inner psychological and spiritual journey. And I think it's just a very good reminder of the fact that there are so many magical ways to look at our existence and to approach our minds and world with wonder. There are so many things we don't understand and that does not mean we should be afraid, but rather to stay curious and open to the new possibilities. And there are lots and lots of possibilities out there. I hope you have lots of fun and I hope that you get great insights when trying out the prompts. Of course, if you feel called to try them out. And let me know in the comments if you do. I will see you in the next video.